Sul Sul, hello, and Labas. Welcome to this CAS video, create a sim video, which is the first one I've ever done. So suggestions are appreciated in the comments below. And I'm revealing all of my CAS secrets here, which is that I'm bad at it. <laughs> What I usually do is I actually usually start by randomizing the sim. So I will go through and I will randomize the head shape, the forehead, the eyes, the nose, the lips, the cheeks, and the jaw. Because I don't know if this is true for anyone else, but for me, if I'm in charge of Cass, all my sims look exactly the same. And so there are elements of that with this sim, but this sim has to have a very specific look. She has to live in a very specific place and she has to have a very specific job. So there's only so much of the randomizer button that I'll end up using, but it is essentially the foundation. In fact, fun fact, if you watch my Ultimate Decades Challenge series and you know the Generation 1 Sims, Darius, Vilkas, and Dovile Marite, they were, as a matter of fact, all three times randomized buttons. That's what created them. A lot of people have said, oh, they're so attractive, but that wasn't me that did that. That was the randomizer button. I just put on the skin details, you know what I mean? Made some minor tweaks. Now this sim is going to be named Lizabetta, or Lizabetta, if you should so choose to say it that way. She is a Mediterranean sim, she lives in a Mediterranean world, and therefore she will end up living in Tartosa when she gets placed in the world. And she's a character who's going to have sort of something to do with one of the characters from my series, but you'll see more if you watch the series on Thursday. Now, because she's a Mediterranean sim, I really wanted her to have olive skin, but I struggle with skins to know if they look the way that I want them to or not. I think this one is a pretty good one. And for her, I knew that I wanted her to have these big soulful eyes, these big thick eyebrows, and also this sort of hair that has these big loose curls. That was what I saw in my head when I was thinking about the role she's gonna play in the story. So I'm going through and looking for hairs that have curls, but I'm already pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we're gonna end up at a CC hair because big curly hairs are few and far between, you know? The ones with those big loose curls. They're just not very common in the game. I think I heard a CC creator one time talking about how it's really difficult to have hair look like that in the game, like something kind of looks off about it. It's hard to design them. And so eventually I land on these hairs that I think are actually quite old. They're from a ancient Greece hair pack. And this is exactly the look that I was going for. That kind of curl is perfect. However, the big issue with it is that I love this hat. This hat has to go with this sim. I decided the moment I saw it, I downloaded it for this sim. This is from Ngeli, Medieval Sims Taylor and Carpenter, or Sims Versus, depending on how you look them up. But the only thing about this hat is that it clips with this hair. It does, however, come with a hat hair version, and so I end up using the hat hair version for her outfits that are out in the world. Imagining that she's a sim who modifies her hair, straightens it a little bit, which actually women and people have had ways of modifying their appearance going all the way back in time. It's not just such a modern thing. Now I'm looking for the perfect eyebrow, the perfect thickness, because for myself, I have teeny tiny thin eyebrows and I don't like them on myself. So I always want thick eyebrows and this sim is getting the eyebrows I wish that I had. Anybody else out there with thin eyebrows? Even if you have thick eyebrows, probably at some point you've wanted thinner eyebrows, you know? I guess that's just the way it goes. We all want something that we don't have in a way at some point in our lives. But the thin eyebrows, I didn't used to mind them, but these days, these days I do. What I want for her nose is actually something that has what I think is often described as an aquiline profile, which I believe is when it has that bump at the top and it's a little bit more prominent of a nose. 
and I struggle really hard to find that without making the tip of the nose go down, aka making her look more like a wicked witch, so I end up landing on this nose with some few modifications and tweaks. I do think that from the front it has too much of a cute little bump on it, like that bump at the bottom on the tip. I think that's a bit too cute for this character, but we'll add some skin details and it will end up looking perfect. Honestly, I'm borderline obsessed with this sim. I think that she's one of the most beautiful sims I've ever made, and it only took me about an hour to do it. I've cut out some parts so that you don't have to suffer with me. Now, most of my skin details are from Praline Sims. I'm somebody who tends to find a CC creator that I like, and if they've got a big enough catalog, I tend to just stick with them, um, mostly because I don't know I'm bad at finding new CC. Like, it's just that simple. If you know of any great CC creators, please let me know in the comments because I'm just bad at finding them. I struggle so hard to find CC creators. So please just drop your suggestions below. And what I'm doing here is I keep putting this mask on and off, on and off, on and off, is thinking about how much this looks exactly like the face that I want her to have and wondering, would I actually be able to tweak her face so that that's what her face looks like without the mask before deciding to remember that actually, I'm not that good at Cass and I shouldn't risk it. <laughs> These eyelashes are also from Praline Sims. The only thing that she's got on right now that isn't Praline Sims in terms of skin details is the Boo Boo Blush from Squeamish Sims, which I think has not been updated in a long time. I remember it hadn't been updated when I found it about a year and a half ago, and so it was kind of tough finding that, but maybe it's been updated these days, or maybe there's another blush that's, you know, just as good as a skin detail. For me, I tend to use these um, Praline Sims uh, eyelashes. I think for most of the Sims that I play in my historical gameplay, it looks perfectly fine. I know a lot of people like Kijikos, but Praline Sims also has another collection that's a bunch of different mascaras and eyeliners and things like that that I look through. And because this Sim actually works in a career where she probably is using makeup, because people in the Middle Ages used makeup occasionally, although not all of it was good for their health, this sim actually gets to wear some extra mascara and eyeliner and i think once that's applied she has exactly that kind of like soulful those soulful eyes that i was looking for her to have as a character i think her eyes are just so beautiful they're the kind of eyes that you could just stare into for days you know you could just stare into and forget yourself these skin details that are going on now are from a set by Okrui, which is really, really good. I learned about that from another YouTuber. And I think that they're so great because there's such a variety to them. There's so many different um, ways that it changes small details, and it does help the Sims feel more individual instead of all looking exactly the same. Some examples of makeups that people would use, um, for example, in Italy, is women would use Deadly Nightshade to create an eye drop that would make their pupils seem bigger, and would make their pupils get bigger to look at. Um, and that was supposed to make them more attractive. However, the downside of this is that Deadly Nightshade says it right there in the name, deadly and so this could create blindness it could lead to heart arrhythmia it could lead to difficulty seeing if you didn't go blind and of course deadly it could lead to death makeup is always so crazy isn't it for me i'm recording this just after the live stream for the life and death expansion pack it's october 25th today and so i'm i've just seen that live stream and I only just recently updated to the newest patch because it had broken so many mods and there were so many hotfix patches coming out. So it was only just recently that I became able to use this apply to all outfits filter. Um, and you can probably tell because while I managed to pull it off for a lot of the outfits and a lot of the parts of the outfits and the makeup, I do forget that it exists when I'm applying the blush and proceed at this point to go through and in each single outfit, 
apply it over again because I have completely forgotten the apply to all outfits button exists. It's one of those things, you know? It's a real game changer, but I just haven't gotten used to using it yet. <laughs> Now, this is a good time to probably bring up that I have never done a cast video before. I think I've only ever seen two in my entire life, so this might be 100% the wrong way to do a cast video. I do not know, you will have to tell me. But now it's time to clothe our good pal, Lizabetta. Lizabetta was inspired by historical facts that I found quite interesting, and so you can kind of see a hint of her profession in the clothes that she's wearing. This is the 1300s and arms should have been covered if you wanted to be considered respectable. However, she doesn't necessarily cover her arms all the time. Ooh, scandalous, right? And that's because Lizabetta actually works in the oldest career, which includes living at a brothel. I'll let you put two and two together because I'm not really sure how YouTube views talking about stuff like this. But the interesting historical facts about women who worked in this career is that, well, in the Middle Ages, everyone was expected to dress like what they are. There was a big belief about that. There were a lot of laws, rules, and regulations regarding who could wear what and when they could wear it. So if you were a very wealthy person and you had a big salary, you might be allowed to buy four new sets of clothes each year. Wow, that's right. You could buy four sets of clothes if you were very wealthy. But if you were less wealthy than that, you may not be able to buy four sets of clothes. You also couldn't wear certain types of fur if you were of a certain class. You had to be upper class to have access to different things, and you could get in big trouble if you were caught wearing things that you shouldn't be. Now for Elizabeth's profession, there were lots of different rules regulating what women who worked in that profession could wear and couldn't wear. In some cities, they had to wear yellow hoods, and others, they had to wear these striped yellow hoods that I heard described as looking like the rays of a sun. In other cities, they were required to wear yellow and white, and in cities like Vienna, they were required to wear bells and stilettos. So that necklace that she's wearing there that is from Luna Moth, that necklace is kind of a nod to the idea of bells because I don't have any bells in my outfits, um, but that kind of gives that same concept. This dress, this beautiful, beautiful dress, oh my gosh, isn't it stunning? Most of my sims are too poor to afford nice clothes like this, so when I get the chance, you know, you know the sims go all out. All of the other dresses she's wearing, though, come from Medieval Sims Taylor and Carpenter or Ngilly or Sims vs. depending on where you source their material from. They're great historical content CC creator. If you haven't checked them out yet and you play historical saves, definitely check them out. Now the interesting thing though about in Vienna, women having to wear bells and stilettos is that high class women would see these women out walking around with their bells and their stilettos and they thought to themselves, hot dog, that looks good. And so they did what people always do and they started imitating that fashion, which is funny because the whole point was that it was supposed to distinguish women who worked in this one career from everyone else. And so it's kind of funny that high class women started imitating it. That's just my opinion. I think it's funny. As we go through her outfits, I'm taking off the hood or the hat from the hairs that it makes sense on. Obviously on active wear, sleep wear, swim wear. I mean, I guess you could wear a hat if you were swimming. That's a you choice, not a me choice, but this sim isn't going to. And then just kind of going through and once again, I've forgotten all about that apply to all button that I could have used. So instead I'm doing it the old fashioned way, one by one. Mm. But while Lizabetta's getting dressed up and looking like the smoke show that she is, ah, oh, I hope by this point that this comes out, that there's some early access gameplay because this life and death expansion pack, it looks incredible. Oh my gosh, everything about it looks incredible. Is it just me? I just think it looks amazing. I think we're gonna get this pack and once we've played with it, it's gonna be like infants were where you can't imagine going back to life before infants, you know? Like 
everything about it. To be honest, for me, everything about the whole pack is kind of my vibe. Like, it gives a bit of history, it gives a bit of the dark, the macabre, there's tons of Poe references. Quoth the raven, nevermore. But yeah, everything about it, like the build by, the creatism, the world, oh my gosh, the countryside world, Ultimate Decades people, you know we're using that one. The only thing that's kind of sad is that they put all the stuff that they did, you know, for to reference the past, but for people who are playing in the medieval times, that's still way in the future, you know what I mean? But man, there's gonna be a ton of outfits you don't even need CC for anymore as you go through the ages. Like there's kind of a nod to the 50s, there's a nod to the 20s for sure. There's of course a uh, sort of like Victorian Edwardian inspired designs in the clothes. It's just such a vibe with a bit of Wednesday Adams and Beetlejuice mixed in, like, you know. I really loved as well the idea of the uh, eulogy. The eulogy thing I think is amazing. I think it's just amazing. Once we have it, I hope that it works well. Oh my gosh. Uh, but going back to Lizabetta, she's just been named and then I'm going through and choosing her traits. And honestly, I kind of wanted to give her materialistic, but the way that I envision her being materialistic is not how the game envisions it. And it's kind of the same with the romantic trait. I think that she's a flirtatious sim, but I don't think she's romantic the way that the game envisions it. So I decided her identifying or dominant characteristic is family oriented. She does like flirting and she's also a bookworm whose main goal in life is to become wealthy so that she can provide for her child slash children and ensure that they have a good life going forward. For a moment, I was really obsessed with the idea of making her hate yellow since this is a color that she's been told by society she has to wear. And then I reconsidered when I thought about actually playing with a Sim who hates something that they wear all the time. <laughs> I thought that as a sim, she loves gossip. She loves to know about what's going on in the town around her. She likes to be in the know, to hear stories. She likes to be entertained. She likes receiving affection and being made to feel valuable as most people do. But she doesn't wanna hear your complaints. Her life is hard already. She doesn't want you to deceive her. People have done that to her in the past. She doesn't want you to be argumentative or malicious to her. She's not here for that. She's worthy of respect and you should be treating her with respect. It was also important that she had a child. And so I went ahead and created him through genetics and then just modified him a little bit before aging him down and dressing him. But I just wanted to say that I know that there's a preconceived notion at our time that people in the past were so religious that they were a lot less forgiving or accepting of people who worked in various careers or people of different backgrounds than we are now. And there is elements of that that are true. But also at this point in time, you know, that's not the whole truth. Like for women who worked in this career that Lizabetta does, there's also the fact that people at the time fully believed that this was a service required by society and that if it wasn't provided, men would go completely insane, they would riot, and they would burn the cities down. So it had to be that this kind of service was provided, the kind that Lizabetta provides. Otherwise, society would crumble. And you might think, oh, well then the church is just gonna say, oh, you're, you're done for, that's it. There's no coming back from this. But that's also not true. When a woman came to the time that she wanted to end that career and enter back into a quote, respectable society. She would just go to the priest, she would confess, and the priest would say, okay, here's your penance. You're gonna get married, you're gonna have some babies, and all's good between you and the big man upstairs, girly. And that was kind of an interesting tidbit that I thought I would share with all of you. Anyways, let me know what you think, and if you would like to see more, I don't normally do them, but it was suggested in the comments recently that I should give it a try. So here I am giving it a try. By now, the Life and Death expansion pack is coming out soon and I cannot wait to see what it holds. Other than that though, thank you for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this cast video and I'll see you in the next one.
Bye-bye, everyone.